seems like it has the potential, because I haven't seen a full game yet, I don't know, to be very exciting or much more going on throughout the game. You're always more engaged with it, whereas baseball has a lot of dull moments. Just It gets pretty boring sometimes, I'll be honest. It gets pretty boring sometimes. So let me know about cricket, especially compared to baseball. As an American, I'm in California. I know very little about cricket, even though I know it is a absolutely massive sport, especially in certain countries. So this will be perfect for me to start to understand. This video is Cricket Explained to baseball fans. I do watch baseball. That's what we have here. We really don't have cricket. And baseball is just about as American as it can get. Even seeing the cricket field in a huge circle is very strange to me to see. It just seems very odd growing up with baseball. So let's just jump into it and help me figure this out. Cricket, explained if you already know baseball. All right, it's me. To get this started, I want you to imagine a game much like baseball, yes. except there are only two bases. And they're basically where home plate is and where the pitcher's mount is. To score a run in this game, you simply have to reach the next base. So if you put the ball in play and you make it to the pitcher's mound, that's a run. And then if you're able uh -oh. to make it back to home plate, then you score two runs on that play. This game is played in the middle of an oval, so there's no foul area. You can hit the ball uh -oh. behind you, you can hit it to the side or whatever. And in this game, the pitchers are allowed to bounce the ball. If you can picture this game in your mind, you are 75% of the way to understanding cricket. The rest of it is details. Perfect, perfect. Before we get started, I just want to say that I'm going to be explaining this like I would to a friend of mine who knows baseball and wants to know about cricket. I'm probably going to be switching between baseball and cricket terminology a All little right. bit more freely right. than maybe somebody who's a hardcore cricket. So maybe you'll learn some uh, baseball terms while you're at it and a rules. <laughs> we, could, we could all learn something here. Cricket fan might be comfortable with. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Yes. But what might be more fun is if you made a companion video that explains baseball in reverse. All right, let's get started. Basic gameplay. So cricket Perfect. is a game played between two teams of 11 players. When a team is fielding, all 11 of its players are on the field at the same time. Nine okay. players are out in the field at the various positions. And then there's one bowler, who is basically the pitcher, okay. and one wicketkeeper, who is basically the catcher. And then the team that is batting has two players at bat at any given time. These batters stand at opposite ends of the pitch, which is a narrow rectangle that's in the middle of the open. All right, so that is the pitch that I'm looking at here. I'm assuming from here to here is that pitch where they run back and forth for runs. I got it. Oval, that is the cricket field. At the ends of the pitch are two wickets, which are these little structures that have three stumps and two bales. The stumps okay. are the three pieces of wood that are in the ground, and the bales are these two little pieces of wood that rest on top of the stumps. A play begins when the bowler, which is basically the pitcher, bowls the ball to the batter. The bowler is ultimately trying to break the wicket which would get the batter out oh. and more on that later. The batter oh. is trying to protect the wicket and put the ball in play. I never understood that. I even watched a video before this months back on my channel, and I'm sure they said that, but I really understand it now. That makes a lot of sense. That is That sounds fun. That sounds really fun. They both have really important jobs to do. Very important. If the ball is put in play and the batter and the teammate are able to switch places. So basically, assume the other one's position, the team has scored a run. And if they can right. do that again, then they score two. And if they can do that again, they score three, etc. There are no strikes in cricket. The batter can just choose not to swing if they don't want to. And there's no penalty for hitting a batter with a legally thrown ball. Batters are expected oh. to protect the wicket and not let themselves get hit. In fact, as we'll see in a little bit, there are actually situations where a batter can be called out if they allow themselves to be hit with the ball. Uh. There is the equivalent of a ball in cricket. It's called a wide. And if the umpire has determined that the bowler has bowled the ball wide, one run is awarded to the batting oh, wow. team. 
There's also something in cricket called a no ball, which is Sorry. when the umpire has determined that the ball has been delivered illegally. And there's a couple dozen different reasons why an umpire might call a no ball. If the umpire calls a no ball, just like a wide, one run is awarded to the batting wow. team. In cricket, the batters stay on the field until they are out. So they continue to bat and score runs until they are put out. That, some people must be up there for a long time. Like the really good players must be up there for, I can't even imagine, with scores just going back and not back and forth, just huge scores. How long? Oh, is there some record that is very known that a batter has, well, what I would say a batter would be up there for, hitting away, scoring for his team? That that would be fun to watch. This means that just like in baseball, a batter can be out with one single swing of the bat or they can stay at bat. I guess, I guess forever, but it's common <laughs> okay. for a batter to score between like 20 and 50 runs in a net bat, and oh it's not unheard my. of for a batter to hit 100. This is called a century, and it's very fun. How common is a century? Is it fun? Because that sounds like it would take a long, long time. The boundary. Along the perimeter of the cricket field is yes. the boundary. Okay. This can be a rope or a little cushion type thing or it could be a short fence or a wall when a ball is put in play and it reaches or goes past the boundary that is called a boundary a ball that rolls and hits or passes the boundary or bounces over the boundary like a ground rule double is worth four runs for the batting Ooh. team a ball that is hit over the boundary so basically like a home run is worth six runs for the batting wow. team Outs. Okay. There are several ways that a batter or runner can get put out in cricket, and they boil down to two basic categories. About Real quick, honestly, this is sounding more like I'm not a huge baseball fan. I just grew up with it. Everyone in America grows up with baseball. They watch it. They have their teams. But cricket seems like it has more action, more going on. Seems like it has the potential, because I haven't seen a full game yet, I don't know, to be very exciting or much more going on throughout the game you're always more engaged with it whereas baseball has a lot of dull moments just it gets pretty boring sometimes i'll be honest it gets pretty boring sometimes so let me know about cricket especially compared to baseball better can be caught out which is just like baseball they hit a ball in the air and a fielder catches it or they can be out if the fielding team knocks the bales off the stumps of the wicket when you are in a position oh where that could put my. you out. There's a few different ways this could happen. Wow. You could be run out. This is where you are trying to score a run, but they knock the ball into the wicket before you reach the crease mm. that defines the place where you are safe. By the way, the bat is part That's of bold. your body okay. when determining whether or not you are safe. You can be bowled out and these are very exciting. Yep. This is where the bowler sends the ball Ooh. to you and the ball bounces past you and knocks the bales off the stumps. A batter can also be put out by the wicket keeper. If the batter moves past this line here called the pop increase and the wicket keeper gains possession of the ball and right. knocks the bales off the stumps. This is stumped. called being stumped out. Oh, it is. A batter can like also it. be called out if they allow the ball to hit them and the umpire yep. determines that the ball would have knocked the bales off the stumps if the batter had not interfered with their body. This is called a leg before wicket. So those are the most common ways that you will see a batter or runner get put out by the fielding team. Dismissal. There are several other much less common ways for a batter to get out, and we will not be getting into them here. One major difference between baseball and cricket is in cricket, if the fielding team thinks that they have gotten a batter or runner out, they first have to appeal to the umpire who will confirm whether or not the batter or runner is out. So if a batter or runner would be out, but no one on the fielding team notices it, then play just continues and the umpire will not just like call them out. When a player is put out, the bowling and fielding team is said to have taken the wicket and the batting and running team is said to have lost the wicket. That was a good play. That Each good play. series of six pitches or deliveries, which are called balls, is called an over. Each over has only one bowler, 
and each bowler only bowls one over at a time. So after a bowler has delivered six balls, they take a position in the field, and another player comes in oh, to be the bowler like for the that. next. I oh, like that. A bowler can field for an over and then come back to bowl again, but a bowler may not bowl two consecutive overs. If you're comparing this all to baseball, overs are similar to individual at-bats in terms of the flow of the game. Okay. Right? It's like one series of deliveries that everyone's watching, and then there's a brief pause while a new player comes on, and then there's a next set of deliveries that everyone's watching. The difference, of course, is that it's the, the bowlers, the pitchers okay. that are coming in and out and not the batters. I like that keeps things flowing and moving and changing up. And these guys need a lot more skill than just say baseball players where you're an outfielder or you're first, second, third base, you know, whatever your position is. Uh, I like that. I like that. Formats. Beyond everything that has been explained so far, the majority of the details of the game that you watch will depend on the format of cricket that you're watching. There are two basic formats of the game of cricket. Okay. There's first class cricket and there's limited overs cricket. First class cricket is what a lot of people think of when they think of cricket. We're talking about the games that go on for several days. Everyone oh, is wearing white. My. Maybe the queen shows up. And first class cricket is most associated with the five day long test matches that international teams play against. Five days long. Oh, two days long, a day long. That is, my mind's always blown. I like tennis. So when those games go on, I think there's one at the Australian Open that went on for something like three days from an American and French person. I'm not really sure, but that was, that was incredible to me. The fact that these go on for days, oh my goodness. Against one another. They're scheduled for five days, but they might be completed before that. At the beginning Still. of the first day, there is a coin toss to determine which team goes first. Ooh. And then the sides alternate going through their entire batting order. This happens twice. So each team goes through its batting order twice for a total of four innings. Unless yeah. the team that goes second scores more runs than the team that went first. In which case, they don't have to actually finish their entire innings. Oh. They just win the game. That was very simplified. <laughs> perfect, perfect. The rules governing test matches could be their own 15-minute video. The other format of cricket is limited overs cricket, where mm -hmm. each team is limited to a certain number of overs. And each innings comes to an end when the specified number of overs has been reached or bad. when all of the batters are out, whichever comes first. There are several types of limited overs cricket, but what is the most popular version of this game? What's the biggest league out of? What is the biggest league? I don't even know that. But there are two that you are most likely to see. The first of these are the One Day Internationals or ODI. These are played between national teams and each team has 50 overs. And then there's also T20 hmm. cricket, which is 2020 cricket, where both teams get only 20 overs. Like this it. style of cricket was invented to be more exciting and more fast paced and to put the length of an individual match around the same as other common sporting events around the world. That makes sense to me. What do you think about that? Is that pretty common? Do you like it? Does and does it make it more exciting? Does this really make it more exciting? Did they achieve their goal? I seem to like it, but everything sounds really good so far. An easy way to know whether you're watching a test match or a limited overs match is whether the teams are wearing white or colors. Okay. And if you are watching right. a professional match, you're almost definitely watching a T20 match. Schoolkeeping. Perfect. All right, pay attention because this is maybe the most confusing part of all of this. The scorekeeping. So at yeah. the bottom of the screen, you'll see it says India, and then it says 118 for five. This does not mean that the score is 118 runs to five runs. That's exactly how I read it. That's exactly how pretty much every American will probably read that. No, this means that India has scored 118 runs for five wickets, which means that five of their batters uh -oh. have been put out. Then okay, it says yeah, yeah. first innings. So this is the first innings of this match. Then it says England 287. So that's how many runs England scored Ooh. in their innings. England is annihilating them, right? Is If I read that right, I mean, I could only imagine that is 
Woo. And since this is a test match, both teams will play two innings. Then you've okay. got information about the two batsmen that are currently up and how many runs they've scored so far. Then at the end, it says broad zero for 24. Yeah. This means that broad, the bowler, has taken zero wickets so far and has allowed 24 runs. And then the yeah. 15 o'clock over there, that's just the time of the day. It's 3 p.m. Now, oh. for a limited overs match, there's a little bit more information that you need to know. So here you go. Down at the bottom, it says England. This is another game between England and India. It's a women's game. So it says England, 103 for four. So and real quickly, again, who is is there a country that typically dominates, does really well in cricket? I know I could think of a few countries that are really into cricket, but I wonder if there is, I mean, these are all between England and, which I'm just kind of guessing that they are both really good and some of the top tier in cricket. Let me know if I'm completely wrong with that. But who are some of the better teams out there or best countries? So that means that they've scored 103 runs for four wickets. P2, don't worry about what that means yet. Then it says 24.3 of 50. That means that we are 24 overs and three deliveries into this innings. Mm -hmm. And then the 50 means that this innings will have at most 50 overs, right? Because this is a one day oh, international. Yep, 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 then yep. it says target 222. This means that India went first and scored 222 runs. So that's how many runs England has to score to win. And from there, it's pretty much the same as the test match we just saw. Just be careful, because if you're watching an Australian broadcast, the scores are reversed. What? And the wickets are first, and the runs are second. So on this one, it says... Why Australia? Why? Why? Ren you're being like the U.S. You just want to be different, so you make things confusing. And that's the Renegades. That's a, one of the teams. Five for 135. So it's five wickets for 135 runs. So just be careful. It might be confusing. Some final similarities and differences. All right, that's Great. basically it. I thought that we would end this video with a few more similarities and differences between yes. baseball and this cricket. This will be good. One be good. major difference is that in cricket, if a ball is in play, the runners are not compelled to move, right? You only run if you think you can make a run. One similarity oh. is that every cricket ground has different dimensions and a different shape. And much wow. like in baseball, this means that certain cricket grounds are more favorable or less favorable to different. Is there a favorite cricket ground? Is that what they call the cricket ground? I called it fields because I'm used to baseball. Is there a very famous one? Because I know here with pretty much every sport, there's a famous, you know, football field, for example, or baseball or basketball you know there's always like kind of that famous one is there a cricket one that is pretty well known different play styles another difference is that in cricket the positions refer to places on the field wow. and not necessarily the individual fielders so if baseball had a similar thing like you would not be the shortstop for your team you would just be a fielder who would be playing shortstop position. Okay. And then if your team was in a shift or whatever, maybe you would be said that you were in the second base position. Or maybe for one batter, you would be in the shallow mid outfield position, right? Another similarity is that in cricket, players on field and off the field behavior is governed by an old fashioned sense of propriety. That's not unlike the unwritten rules in baseball. And the final difference that's probably become clear to you as you watch this video is that cricket is a much more international game than baseball. I don't mean to say that it is more popular in more countries than baseball, although this might also be true. What I mean by this is that international competitions, so competitions between national teams, are the norm. They're not like a special thing that everyone tunes into every four years. Professional cricket is a relatively new phenomenon in the world. Oh, and while leagues are becoming much more popular these days, it wasn't very long ago that professional cricket was looked upon as diluting the purity of the game. All right, baseball fan, you have just become a cricket master and you are ready to watch any cricket game that comes across your television. If you are a cricket fan and you notice that I got something wrong, which I probably have, or that I left something out, which I probably did, feel free to let me know in the comments. Although, like I said, all right, so that was the video, and firstly, that looks incredibly confusing to me. I feel like I know so much more about it, but please give any stories if you play it or have played it or know someone that plays it. 
any stories I always love to hear about. I love to join in. So comment away and I will jump into the comments to join. So thank you for watching. Thanks for making it this far. We will definitely do more cricket because now I actually am starting to understand it. So hope to see you next time and have a good rest of your day.